What if I told you that with just a few clicks, you could know exactly where your round will land before you even pull the trigger. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to find your dope or data on previous engagement for your AR-15 using a ballistic calculator. Then we're gonna take the information and go to the range to true the data in real time. So if you've ever been curious about stretching your capabilities accurately and reliably, grab a pen, take some notes, and let's hop straight into this video. So first of all, what is dope? DOPE stands for Data on Previous Engagements. In simple terms, it's the exact ballistic data your rifle, your optic, and your ammo produce in your hands. It tells you how much to hold or dial at different distances based on actual data, so no guesswork. Placing your reticle at a given target at distance hoping the round lands will be something of the past because with this data, you can fine tune it to utilize it in more real world applications. Now in this video, I will be getting data for 5.56, which isn't necessarily a precision round, but for what I use it for, it's more than accurate. My rifle isn't set up for strictly precision shooting, so my results will differ compared to a rifle that's sole purpose is to be as precise as possible. Just keep that in mind. So what are some things that we'll need to find our dope? First thing being an optic that measures in mil or MOA. Pick what you're comfortable with because both work. Just be consistent across all your platforms. You'll also need a measuring tape just to grab a few dimensions like sight height. You'll need a chronograph so that you can accurately measure your muzzle velocity. And when you have precise muzzle velocity, this will help you get more accurate data than the muzzle velocity that might be suggested on your ammo box. You can always use that number to start off with and adjust it as you chew your information. But to save you a lot of time, I suggest just getting a chronograph. And the great thing is there are a lot of different chronographs you can get at various price points. If this is your first time getting your dope and you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can get a Caldwell or a Pro Chrono for just under 150 bucks. And that price may vary depending on where you buy them. I started off with these and they do work. The setup process isn't the easiest, but for the sake of collecting muzzle velocity, you can't go wrong with either one of these. But when people ask me what I suggest when it comes to chronographs, I kind of fall into the buy once, cry once category. Now, I don't suggest this option if you're just getting into shooting at distance or long range and have no real desire to pursue this aspect of shooting. But if this is something you do see yourself doing long term, then the Garmin Zero is a solid purchase. I really like this chronograph because of the ease of use. It's as simple as turning the chronograph on, choosing your bullet weight, and placing the chronograph next to your rifle. No shooting through cones or tampering with your rifle. I've been using mine for a year now, and being able to put this into my backpack and having it set up in under a minute is incredibly convenient. And as for accuracy goes, there have been many YouTube channels comparing the results from the Garmin Zero to other chronographs on the market. And the Garmin seems to be one of the most accurate options available. This chronograph comes in at 600 bucks, so it's definitely an investment. Lastly, you'll need a ballistic calculator. Majority of us have smartphones, and there are plenty of apps you can download for free to utilize a ballistic calculator. My recommendations are the Hornady app or GeoBallistics. I personally use GeoBallistics, and it works amazing. There are paid versions of these apps as well, which usually consists of being able to save multiple different rifle profiles on the same account. But if you're using it for free, like I am, you can only save one rifle to your account at a time. Before we get too far in this video, I'd like to say thank you to our channel sponsor, Obsidian Tactics. Obsidian Tactics is an online retailer that offers a curated selection of high quality and high value products that have been vetted throughout the two-way community. A lot of the items they offer are well-known brands that you may already be looking to purchase. So go visit Obsidian Tactics for all your two-way needs and wants. All right, back to the video. So now you have all the suggested equipment that you'll need What's next? Before we do anything else, you will want to double check your zero. This is because if your zero is off, all the data we're going to collect today will be rendered useless. This is because the ballistic calculator is going to feed you information within the parameters that you give it. So whenever I'm about to collect data, I'll go and just confirm my zero is accurate. Now we're out at the range and I'm gonna get my zero. For the sake of this video, um, I was already zeroed, but I have a quick detach for this American Defense scope mount. So what I did is just detached it and then reattached it just so that the zero would be slightly off. It should be pretty close, but I want to show you guys what it looks like to get a good zero. So here, I'm gonna get my velocity while I zero.
All right, so as you can see, it's pretty close. I'm gonna go up just a little bit. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. It seems to be dead on now, and I see, it looks like I'm stacking rounds. I'll confirm when I go down there, and I'll have my camera with me when I go down there. And my velocity, I did 14 shots. My average velocity is 2556.7. That's what I'm gonna input into my calculator for today. And then we'll see how accurate that is out to about 550 yards. I think it's 550 or 540. All right, so in the footage in my scope cam, you probably saw that my first two shots were down here. And that was just me, I guess, warming up because everything else seemed to stack right here until I started pulling up when I adjusted for elevation. So right now, the majority of my shots were hitting here, but then my last couple of shots were hitting up here. So I would consider this to be pretty zeroed. Um, if you wanna get a more precise zero, I actually have smaller targets that I might come back out here to uh, verify. And they're like probably this size or maybe, actually they're about this size and they have a smaller red dot, which I'll be taking advantage of in the future. But as of right now, for the sake of this video, I made some quick adjustments. This is where I'm at right now, and this is where I was kind of starting. So I started low, I kind of showed up, and then my final adjustments were up higher. So this is what I will call a decent zero. Um, if you want to, you definitely want to get a more precise zero, but I'm kind of running low on time today, but like I said earlier in the video, you wanna get a more precise zero and make sure your group is solid and you can take a couple of days to do this. All right, now we have our muzzle velocity. So what I'm gonna do now is walk you through the Geo Ballistics app and show you how to set up your rifle as well as how to input information to get your first dope chart. Cool, so we just opened up the app and right now you can see I already have some information put in, but we're gonna disregard all of that and start from scratch. So we're gonna go over here to where you can find the add rifle profiles. As you can see, I have the Griffin 14.5 set up. So what I'm gonna do is go over and hit the three dots and hit edit. And this is where we're gonna start everything. So at the top, you can type in the name of your rifle and then we'll move down to the bullet section below. You can input your bullet specs manually if you'd like, but I recommend trying to find your bullet in the bullet library so it auto fills the information for you. So the bullet library is the orange icon with the magnifying glass. So it's the one on the left. And here you can search your bullet. Now I manually put mine in cause I didn't have it in here initially. So that's what's at the top, the one that I custom made. But if you find your bullet in there, you can click it and it'll fill out this information. I run AAC 77 grain OTMs, primarily when I'm shooting at distance. So if you can't find your bullet in here, I'll show you what you can do. And we can go and hit the edit button and you can put in your caliber in inches, which mine is 0 0.224. You can put in your grain, which is 77 grain. My length of my bullet, 0.99 inches. And then you can choose your drag model. G1 is the older standard for flat base bullets and G7 is better for more modern boat tails. If you go to AAC's website or Palmetto State's website and look at the specs of the bullet, it's using the drag model of G1. Metro is Army. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see my ballistic coefficient. Like I said, you can go onto the website of your manufacturer to find your ballistic coefficient. And mine is 0 0.362. When you have your minimum and maximum velocities or your little range of velocities, I have 0 0.6 or 362 between 2,500 and 3,000. And then I also have another range of 0 0.362 between 1,800 and 2,500. So you can delete these if you know what ballpark you're gonna be in. I just left them when I started because I just didn't know what my muzzle velocity was gonna be. And then it'll auto fill what that ballistic coefficient is depending on the velocity that you input later. So we'll go back down here and we'll go down to rifle. So we'll start with sight height. To be clear, this is not how high your optic sits from the Picatinny. It is the measurement from the center of your bore to the center of your optic. So grab the measuring tape and get that measured real quick. Mine is 2.75. My zero range is 100 and my elevation and windage offset is set to zero. My barrel twist, I have a one in eight barrel twist. You can find this on your barrel or if you bought your rifle in whole, you can go to the website and they will tell you what barrel twist you have. And then down here, I have muzzle velocity. So the last time I went out at 2566 feet per second, and that was the muzzle velocity I used to get my dope chart. But I'm gonna redo this when I'm out there getting my zero. And if it's slightly off, 
I'm gonna adjust it so that when I'm shooting that day at different distances to true my data, that it'll be as accurate as possible. MV temp off. And then if you go down to optic, your solution units. So this is where you're gonna look at your optic and see what it is measured in. Mine is mils or mil radians, or you can do MOA if that is what your optic reticle is set to. Elevation and windage, those are at one. I mean, I didn't touch anything else here on geoballistics. So that is it. That is my rifle profile. I have my rifle and my bullet and I have it as accurate as I can get it. So once we hit back, you'll see that at the bottom, next to the rifle emblem, there will be an atmospheric section. Temperature, altitude, and humidity will affect your bullet path. It may be minute, but they are still important to have. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see an online weather section. The cool thing about geoballistics is that you can access local airports in your area to get a good estimate of weather. Mind you, this is the weather across the entire region you are in, not specifically the exact location you are currently standing. If you want the utmost accurate readings for weather, you'll need something like a Kestrel to pull that information. But I've been using local weather readings for acquiring my dope for over a year now, and it's been more than good for what I try to do. The hardest part of all of this is learning wind calls. Wind directly affects your bullet more than anything else. And that will take some time to learn and hopefully one day master. But going back to the online weather, I'm going to click this little icon right here and it'll give me a bunch of options I can choose from in my local area. So I'll click the top one because that's where I'm at. And then once you see down here, I'll have wind speed, I'll have wind direction. I also have the temperature, pressure, humidity, and density altitude. So I'll hit use for both of these. And if I scroll back up to the top, you'll see that it auto filled all of that information. And now when we hit back, if we go to the chart section, which you can customize what increments you want this to display, you will see that I have all this information on where I need to hold or dial depending on the distance. So at 100 yards, it's set to zero, but then at 250, it says I need to be up nine mils. At 450, it says I need to hold or dial to 3.1 mils. And then at 600, it says I need to hold or dial at 5.4 mils. And now that we have all the information, here's where the magic happens. We're gonna take all that data and go to the range. You're going to hold or dial based on the yardage and what data the calculator has given you. What we'll do is start at 100 yards to confirm our zero. Then we'll work our way out to 500 yards in 100 yard increments. So we'll start at 100, then 200, 300, 400, 500. And the reason why we're gonna do it like that is to see how accurate the information is at various distances. And then we'll write down any corrections we think we may need. All right, so now we're out here and we have steel all the way out to, I believe it's 550, 540, 550. At this range, they don't have things at exactly 100 yard increments. So I'm gonna use my range finder and input that exact distance so that I'm getting the exact hold or what I'm going to dial to on my rifle. All right, a couple shots at 100 just to warm up. All right, this should be my okay, two more rounds. So now we're gonna move over to the next target, 190.8. So my elevation, it is telling me it's going to be 0.4 mils. Make sure I'm comfortable and relaxed. Sweet. And that is pretty simple. So the next target past that is going to be at about 281. Hit. That's a hit. So now I'm gonna move over to this plate rack and see if I can get a hit on one of these real quick. It's a little high, pull with that. Hit that one. Hit that one. There we go. All right, next target. 
to that plate rack i'm going to get a distance on that and we'll see how long it takes for me to hit that plate rack because now we're not hitting the c zone we're hitting something a little bit more precise i'm getting 482 all right 2.8 mils for 482 Okay, so I just realized what the problem was with that distance at 482 yards. I was looking at my windage and not the elevation. I don't know why I decided to look at that, but my elevation actually says 3.6. Here we go. So what was the other one that we just said it was? All right, 572. Now I'm saying five mils flat. So we're getting some wind, so I'm gonna hold over one mil of wind. Hit. It's hard to gauge what is actually happening at 500 yards simply due to the fact that the wind, I don't know if you guys can hear it, but the wind keeps changing over here and I can see it down there. So I'm still holding one mil to the right, which seems to be giving me some impacts, but it's not consistent because then sometimes I'll be shooting it high, which is probably more of a me problem than the rifle. So there you have it. You've learned how to measure real world muzzle velocity, build a ballistic profile using free tools, and chew the data out at the range for first round impacts. Once you've done this, you'll never go back to guessing again. Your rifle becomes an extension of your capability and your confidence at distance. If this helped you out, consider saving this video and watching it before you attempt to make your first dope card. I'll have each part of this video chaptered to make it easier to scroll through. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. As always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.